So now we can start consolidating the state resource corporations. Like so. I still don't have access to any of my factories. Come on! The 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games comes to an end. The first Olympic Games to be held in Asia, the 1964 Summer Olympics, have now concluded. Opening itself up to the world, Japan took every opportunity to showcase its growing technological might. The Games being the first to be telecast internationally with over 70% of the population, viewing Emperor Hirohito officially open the Games. International admirers have praised Tokyo itself, especially its modernising efforts crowned with the newly put into service bullet train, transporting attendees around the city. The United States claimed the most success this time around, winning 40 six gold medals followed by the Japanese Empire with 22 and Italy with 18. Noticeably absent from this entry of the Olympic Games were the teams from Germany, South Africa and England due to the ongoing conflicts. Tokyo has left quite the impression. And Bormann is fighting back in a big way. Interesting. How's the technology coming along? It's coming along. The AB declared war on the Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia. So that's going to be Samara versus the AB. What are the sides like here? So Samara... 11 to 17 factories, 4 to 6. Yeah, this one is Samara's to lose. 2 to 10, 6 to 13. So militarily, they're roughly the same. But Samara has a massively improved industry over the AB. At least I think I had them selected for industry, right? Yeah, I did. 5 factories. Oof. Five. Pfft. I mean, to be fair, that's still probably more civilian factories than I have. So Akutsk looks like it's digging deep into Magadan. And they've got a cutoff here against the Divine Mandate. They do have a very big army. If they can beat Magadan and then turn all of their troops north, then they'll be fine. The delicate balance of power in German Civil War continues to shift as Bormann's Germany conquers Göring. And that's it. End of the Civil War. Bormann won. Martin Bormann. So the Arc Nationalist came in and second Hitler. Oh goody. Note the sarcasm. Increase the construction budget. Uh, previously I couldn't do that because of a lack of political power. Now however I can. I don't think that's going to be enough. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to click on you. Expecting 62% of the total number of factories to produce consumer goods. Legacy of the Siberian Uprising is using 20% as well. What's that? Oh, this is another new one. So that's going to be lost on the 3rd of September 1965. So until that goes away, we are basically useless. So, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. That was a waste of political power. And also, it's going to be costing me more of my GDP. I'm assuming that some of my income is related to my budget. Yeah, construction spending is down. I'm going to reload a save because that was a silly move. It's only three days ago. Uh, 
Did the US beat Japan or did how that how did that part of World War II go? No, Japan won, but I'm not sure how. That's a good question. That's part of the game lore I'm not sure about, uh, Katie. Good question, though. Because I do think that inevitably the US would have beaten Japan. Germany nuked Pearl Harbor. Oh. Okay. And we have a decision available. So this time, I'm just going to continue to invest in my economy to try and keep the GDP rising at a quick enough pace that it outstrips the uh, rising interest. Construction speed boost is pointless. Stability down, water support up is pointless. That one increases stability. That could be better. And it's only 30,000. That gets us another 4,000 manpower. Now, are there any of these that I should just wait for? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Agriculture, societal development will go up. Poverty rate will improve. No, this one we want. We'll slightly increase GDP. It will cost 200 million. But getting rid of the poverty rate, I think, is one of the big reasons that we're so behind. So we're going to encourage agricultural mechanization. Is it just me or does the former Rice Commissary at Moscow look smaller? Um Possibly? I don't really remember how big they were previously. Bormann wins the German Civil War. The German Civil War, the most devastating and bloody conflict to ever consume Germany. Really? Bigger than World War II? Has finally ended with Martin Bormann emerging as the victor. Having enjoyed extensive support during the Civil War, many expected Bormann's victory to be the most likely outcome of this terrible conflict. Standing before the Volkshalle today, the new Führer promised the German people a swift return to the former glory of the Reich, promising limited reform to ensure such a conflict never need occur again. With the nation in ruins, a collapsed economy and a weary populace, and much of Europe still consumed by chaos, however, the true future of the Reich remains uncertain. Yet with the great politician leading them, many remain hopeful that Bormann truly will be able to return stability to the Reich. Peace returns to... Germany. So how much was that agricultural mechanization going to cost? 50. Okay. Western Revolutionary Front declared war on the Komi Republic. That's these two. Oh, it's Archangel. They finally woke up. Ural Military District declared war on the West Siberian People's Republic. That's... West Siberian. Uh, Tuman. I'm surprised that these guys haven't really grown yet. And Samara does seem to be smashing the AB. Islamic Republic of Ostne has defeated the state of Aktau. A kingdom of contradictions done. So now we have monuments to our victories, gain base war support, we can build a new capital, or have a new aristocracy, which will also increase our stability and give more political power. I think right now... New aristocracy is probably the one that we want. Because war support I don't really care about. Stability though, I definitely do. In these turbulent times, men elect to follow those with the biggest purse and gun. A good subject is hard to find, but harder to maintain. The Principality of Siberia is full of opportunists and men of low morals. 
but they are fodder. The Tsar's advisers, generals and local leaders shall be rewarded for their loyalty with landed titles. Useful individuals of poor character will be given honorary empty titles and eventually marginalised until devoted men come along. Commanders will be given fiefdoms in the form of villages and camps so that they can muster custom forces for upcoming campaigns. Mayors and advisers shall receive large settlements to foster economic growth and development. Naturally, there will those who decry the nobility as corrupt and archaic. What they do not understand, however, is the aristocracy organises the population in a unique way. While the rest of the Rus suffers from a lack of hierarchy, we'll be planting the seeds for a better tomorrow. A better tomorrow using the plans of yesterday. A family feud. As you can see, Father, our domain now stretches from Tatarisk in the west to Brunsk in the east. For the first time in several weeks, our forces have reported minimal resistance to our... Boris Krylov trailed off as he looked to his father. The king looked deeply troubled, his eyes distant and cold. Rick II cared to see, uh, seemed to care little for the subject at hand. It was obvious his mind was focused on something darker. Father, what troubles you? You've been quiet today. Rook the Second's eyes snapped to his son. It's your siblings, Boris. What the hell am I supposed to do with them? Their disputes grow more venomous and destructive by the day, and I cannot bear to watch it any longer. Boris walked away from the map he'd been presenting and sighed as he took the seat next to his father. The old king sounded utterly defeated. I wish I could tell you. You know I was never one for the politics, father. Politics? You think this is about politics? Yuri and Lydia, my own flesh and blood, have become enemies and I've done so little to stop them. What kind of father stands by while his children go to war? Rurik sounded as though he was on the verge of tears. Boris put a reassuring hand on his father's shoulder. You've done what you could, father. As much as it pains us to see them fight. This can be the only way to settle their differences. The king's eyes grew distant once more. Perhaps you're right, Boris. It's just... I used to be so close. Trouble on the horizon. Nah, I'm sure we'll be fine. Agricultural mechanization, and I think we can actually improve something else. Oh, in-state poverty relief programs. Do that. And very soon we can actually get another <laughs> upgrade too. Gross Deutsche Reich, der Deutschen Nation declared war on Dietzland. Dietzland, that's... Netherlands. They're going after the Dutch. Oi! Stop that. Cornelis von Hilkerken. He's a Dutch Nazi. Blah. So much King for uh, Boris foreshadowing. Yeah, it kind of does feel like Boris is going to like come out of nowhere and take the throne. Like, he's the one sucking up to his father right now. He's going to be the one named successor. They've gone four. Wow, things have really stabilized. Uh, Siberian Black League and their allies have defeated the West Siberian People's Republic. Meanwhile, Samara and the AB continue to fight. I think this is probably the most engaged in a war I have been. Because this could be the end of one of the worst factions in this game. The end of the South African War, the most controversial and significant international conflict since the Second World War. The South African War has come to an end with today is coming into the force of the Treaty of Gabron. With the Obst Rolf Steiner signing for the German forces, and General Creighton Abrams, Abrams signing for the forces of the OFN, the development of the war into a bitter and costly stalemate has forced a return to the pre-war borders. With the border unchanged and terrible loss of lives on both sides, the controversy of war now appears solidified in history, as many now ask whether the war was truly worth it. Now as the Boer people's reintegrate into South Africa, many within the OFN fear that the last beacon of democracy in Africa will swiftly return to its pre-war troubles, whilst the German Africa faces uncertain future now that the Schild's gamble to secure Africa has failed. Peace at last? That feels like that should be a question. <laughs> Peace at last? Okay, rubber processing has finished. Good. I feel... Like I would like to continue that, but also... Ah, here it is. Enables building, synthetic refinery, state level 2. I was not going to get oil processing, but for that alone, it suddenly becomes worthwhile. Do it. The last war taught how important fuel is. The new wave of aircraft and self-propelled equipment requires a far larger output, and the scientific world is ready to take on the challenge. 
I don't really need the oil or the fuel gain from refineries, but what I do need are more factory slots for synthetic refineries, because those are the ones we can build in the places with really high infrastructure, which is basically this central band. Like, trying to build a synthetic refinery in somewhere with, like, two infrastructure or three infrastructure, it's just going to take too long. Which country gets direct? The AB? Basically anyone around them. But right now it's the Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia. Which I think is a very appropriately named faction to be the one destroying the AB. They are indeed liberating the peoples of Russia from complete idiots. Ah, we can get another one. Worker training would be industrial expertise, research facilities... Education would be more... Uh, academic improvement. hate that sound! Um, I would very much like to continue improving the academic base. Now the question is, once it hits 240, does it continue to improve like that? Or does it just stop and you have to reinvest? If anybody in chat knows, I would love to know that. Although, getting the academic base, I think is a good idea. The South Africa war caused World War III and thermonuclear Armageddon in your last game. Interesting. It continues, but slower. Okay, interesting. In that case, yes, we will invest in the academic base. Education funding, 175 million. Moderately increases GDP. That's a good one. GDP growth rates, 5% and annually. Deficit to income ratio is 26.1%. New aristocracy. Done. So now I would say probably the new capital, because again, don't really care about war support. We're not at war. The capital of the nation is also its heart, just like old Moscow connected all of Russia. Kemerovo is beginning to branch out its infrastructure and soon all ra roads may lead to it. However, the Zemsky Sobor has been considering relocating the capital to a more practical location, such as Novosibirsk. A central location could alleviate future logistical issues as well as inspire the people. After all, Kemerovo was forced to be the seat of the Tsar because of necessity, but now we can afford the luxury of choice. No, I should stay in Kemerovo. It was Kemerovo who united everything, and it also still has a massive amount of industry. It's by far and away the most industrialized area. And you want to put it just next door? I don't really see how that will change things. Kemerovo is the city of victory. Yeah, exactly. If you're Rurik, you should move it to Kiev. Yeah, not wrong. Or Novgorod, at the very least. But we're still kind of a long way away from any of that. <laughs> That's our ambition. Ah, we can get another one. Um, do we have any other bonuses like the Siberia plan? No, we finished those. Do we still get the bonuses from it? Yes. Eh, too bad the consumer goods ended at a minus two. Could probably have done with beefing that up to like a minus ten or fifteen. Oh well. You win some, you lose some. I think the next one I would like to get is probably expertise is the people. Industrial equipment's the big one. That's the power tools. So yeah, we're going to import heavy machinery. The Ural Military District declared war on the Siberian Black League. Also, did you guys finish training? No. Oh, you're still going. Okay. Uh, because we do, in fact, have enough to add another APC. 
Yeah, we have more than enough to actually do this. Boom. And this is getting us more and more motorized in storage as we're reducing our reliance on them. And it also means that our tank units are getting beefier and beefier. Germany restores control over Central Europe. The Reich's protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, together with the Netherlands and Denmark, were the territories where Germanization proved the most successful. When Germany fractured, these territories entered a state of political upheaval, but in the end, the land this close to the beating heart of the Reich couldn't be allowed to become a potential threat. As such, it was no surprise when the new government in Germania decided to quickly move in and seize back such important provinces, especially the Netherlands, with their trade ports and Bohemia with its industrial core. With friendly governments in Copenhagen and Amsterdam, the total annexation of the Reich's protectorate, the new Führer has secured complete control over Central Europe. To be expected. Uh, we have got large-scale exercises, and we now need to make a decision between even more factory construction, or break through an organization for leg infantry, and 20% max planning. I feel like our centralized industry is going to be good enough. Even without this modifier. That 20% max planning is huge. So is the 25% less organization loss while moving. I mean, so is having a big industry. Yeah, planning is my way, but so is industry. Oh, they're not mutually exclusive. I am so sorry. We can get both. <laughs> when in doubt, grab both. In that case, we're going to get the... Let's go for this one first. Supply and chain reinforcement. Just in case our, like, our tanks get cut off, that's going to make them last for like two weeks. It's going to be crazy. Our use of large-scale operations is contingent upon plentiful supply lines. It is therefore imperative that we adequately prepare them, using our engineers to rebuild infrastructure then occupy territories and using reserve forces as truck drivers and escorts wherever possible to ensure a steady line of supply reaches the front. I, I mean, yeah, industrial first, but right now we're not building military fact. In fact, we're not building anything because, you know, the state of our industry. Annual deficit's almost two billion a year now. We need to increase our income. And for that, we need to reduce our poverty. That's going to be the most critical thing to balancing the books. Because our poverty levels are really high. Unfortunately, it's trending upwards, but only slowly. The fastest, I think, is going to be the academic. Which is good. That's going to help. Two billion in debt. So how much are we losing a year in interest? Oh, I was kind of hoping it would actually say. But it doesn't. Islamic Republic of Konstantinai declared war on the Kazakh Socialist Soviet Republic. Is there a way to get rid of debt? Yeah. Grow your economy. That's why I'm spending so much right now. I'm, I'm quite happily going into debt because it's allowing me to do all these investments. Which is A, improving my GDP. And as long as your GDP grows faster than your debt grows, then you're okay. Because your, the size of your economy can absorb the debt, basically. And also, I'm investing in like the, the basic pillars of my economy to make it grow faster and also just be a stronger economy as a whole. More efficient. A new capital. Done. Right, let's do the monument to our victories. 
When the Tsar still ruled Russia, they erected many memorials to celebrate great feats. These statues are warriors, emperors, thinkers, and workers. They ensure the eternity of nations. However, with the coming of the treacherous Hun and the Japanese, old monuments have been lost, demolished, desecrated. Fortunately, there's no shortage of epics in Siberia. Recent tales of courage and the Tsar's might. Plans are already being laid. Statues of Rurik II will observe the kingdom from mountaintops. City centres will be decorated with shrines to the bravest of the King's Guard. Every factory shall have a monument to inspire its workers. Centuries later, when Russia has climbed out of the grave, our children will look back and marvel at the victories we have won here today. And here we go. The situation has changed dramatically from the grim hours we had endured several years ago. With the victory of His Majesty's armed forces and the expansion of the realm's borders to encompass the entire central Siberian region, the question has been raised of where exactly the royal court shall be located. Kemerovo is never intended to be the permanent centre of royal authority and was chosen mostly, uh, mostly chosen simply because it was the only noteworthy settlement available to us. Now that the region has been unified, we now have a few locations that could potentially be more suitable as administrative centre of the realm. Novosibirsk is the most obvious choice, being the largest and the most populous city in all of Siberia. On top of being a vital industrial centre, the city benefits from a well-developed infrastructure and a strong agricultural base. Alternatively, we could move the court to the city of Krasnorask, formerly controlled by Nikolai Andreev and his mutineers. While not necessarily as populous as Novosibirsk, Krasnoyarsk is still large by Siberian standards, and most importantly of all, it's home to a critical junction the Trans-Siberian Railway. This fact alone makes the city an appealing choice. Of course, we could always decide to just stay in Kemerovo. Of all of the potential choices, Kemerovo is the most centrally located and benefits from having been developed into a stronghold of royal authority for many years. Of course, there's also the sentimental value. Kemerovo was where our kingdom was proclaimed in the first place after all. So Novosibirsk, Krasnorask, or Kemerovo, which actually gives stability. So, you know what's going to happen. We're going to have a vote. And vote. Get your votes in. Vote, vote, vote. Let me know what you think. Where should this capital go? Get your votes in. Vote, vote, vote. Since this vote might be rigged. Nah! What's rigged about it? There's, there's absolutely nothing rigged about this. <laughs> yeah, I know Novo Sibirsk means New Siberia. Well, I see at the moment, and I'm a bit shocked by this, Komarovo is actually losing. How can Komarovo be losing? Guys, come on. How is Komarovo losing? That can't be correct. This feels like a real Viking vote. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that because it's not. The Vikings were one of the most democratic societies. <laughs> Even like the darkness of feudalism in the uh, Dark Ages and the Middle Ages... Scandinavia is remarkably democratic. Iceland is the oldest constantly running democracy in the world. I've played Spear before. Note, this is my first game of New Order. <laughs> 